Welcome to today's Lunch and Learn webinar, What's New in Microsoft Dynamics NAV 2016, brought to you by ArcherPoint. Dynamics NAV 2016 is the latest release from Microsoft and is filled with more exciting and powerful features than ever before. Today, we will provide an overview of NAV 2016, highlighting new features as well as giving you a closer look at how it works. Our presenter today is Sherry Stevenson, a client service representative with ArcherPoint. Sherry has more than 15 years of industry experience implementing and supporting corporate business solutions for mid-market financial, distribution, and manufacturing clients in both national and global markets. With 15 years of experience working with Dynamics and AV, Sherry is an invaluable support resource to our clients. In under an hour today, Sherry will introduce you to many of the new features in NAV 2016, including posting preview, deferral accounting, positive pay, workflows, and finance enhancements. We will also offer a Q&A at the end of Sherry's presentation. You can either type your questions in the questions pane of your GoToWebinar console as we go along, or you can use the raise your hand option during the Q&A and ask your question verbally. I will announce the person asking the question and unmute your line at that time. So let's go ahead and get started. Sherry, over to you. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our webinar today. Thanks for taking the time out of your busy day to listen to hear what's new in NAV 2016. Uh, here's our agenda for today. We're going to go over seven topics. The first one, we're going to talk about document totals, which is in the North American version only posting previews, deferral accounting, positive pay, which again is in the North American version, permissions, workflows, and lastly, report enhancements. First topic, document totals in the North American version. So this new feature allows the user to view the document totals, including facts, on the screen without running a test report or clicking statistics. Currently, this is available on posted and unposted sales documents and purchase documents. The advantages here are that you have visibility right on the screen that you're on, and you don't have to go to another um, menu to look at the statistics. Ease of use and reduction of posting errors. So if you know that the tables don't look right, you can make a correction before posting. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump back and forth between my PowerPoint and NAV 2016 to just kind of demo. So out of here. It's my nav 16. And I'm going to use a sales order to demonstrate the document total. So if I go into this order here, you'll see right below the lines we have this total excluding tax as well as the tax line and the total including the tax. And if there was any invoice discounts or discount percentages, they would be visible here as well. So the just something to note that you can't drill down on any of these amounts, it's just visibility. So if you wanted to drill further down into the tax, we would still have to go to our statistics and drill down into the tax lines. Okay, so again, this is available in the sales order and the purchase order documents. And back to my PowerPoint. So this is just a highlighted version of where to find them on the screen. The next topic we're going to go through is posting preview. So this functionality is similar to the navigate functionality that you see on posted documents. However, now you can see this before posting. So it's available in sales orders, purchase orders, and general journals. <clears throat> the advantage is it provides visibility of the financial impact before posting. And because of that, it can reduce errors unnecessary credit mem memos and, and improve efficiencies. Okay, so I'm going to go in there and show you what that looks like. I use the same sales order. Okay, on the actions tab you'll see there's a little um, magnifying glass with a plus sign. That's your preview posting. If I click that You'll notice this looks very, very similar to the navigate function that you'll see in posted documents. However, at the top it says posting preview. And if you drill down into any of these entries, 
you'll notice the document number is start out. And the, the reason there is because this is not a posted document, this is a pre-posting, so the document numbers have not been finalized yet. The advantage of this is that you can see right away before you post this order what deal you're going to hit and if that makes sense before posting. Okay, and you can also drill down to the value entries if you want to see that posting as well. And again, this is just a screenshot of what we looked at, where the pre-review posting is under the posting ribbon, and what that looks like. The next topic that we're going to get into is called deferral accounting. Uh, this new feature allows the user to automate the process of deferral revenue and expenses over a predetermined schedule. So, this basically allows you, if you've got revenue coming in that you want to even out for the rest of the year, in one posting, you can do this. This is available in sales lines, purchase lines, and the general journal line. Um, the deferral template can be defaulted on the general ledger card to ease the use of data entry. The advantages of this is that all postings for the year resulting in increased efficiency for staff, so you don't have to go in there every month and, and make posting. The deferral schedule is very flexible with different calculation methods and different start dates. And out of the box are referral reports that are already included so you can see your data, how it's posting um, throughout the year. Now the only caveat to note here is that the user must be open for all forward periods in order for this to post. So if you were going to post in January and you were making your postings for the year, they would have to be open for the full year. In order to demo this, I'm going to do a three-step process. So I'm going to set a deferral template. We're going to add the deferral template code to a sales line. And then we're going to post and review forward-looking entries. So I'm going to pop back into my app. Oops. OK, and I'm going to create a new sales order. Okay, and um, for my GL account, I'm going to assume the example is prepaid software. So I'm going to, I want to expense it to my sales software account, and I'm going to say that this is costing me $12,000 for the year. So what I expect to see, oops, actually before I jumped into here, I forgot to show you the deferral template. So I'm just going to pop out before I come back into here. I missed my step one. Apologize for that. Oops. Okay, so for all templates. So as I mentioned, I have set up one already. And if I view this, this is the deferral template. So you create your own name, give it a description. You can also choose what your deferral account is. And in this example, I'm going to say it's 22970, which is prepaid software contracts. You have the option to defer 100% of the line, 50% of the line, any percentage you want of that individual sales purchase or GL line. The calculation method, you've got four options, the straight line, equal per period, days per period, or user defined. And the start date of the posting. So you can either, either do it the actual posting date, the beginning of the period of the posting date, the end of the period, or the beginning of the next period. Uh, in this example, I've created 12 periods. Again, you can modify that. And then the period description, um, basically this is just going to say software revenue, and the percentage 4 means the month, the current month of the year, and percentage 6 is the current year. So that would, if we were posting this month, it would say March 2016. Okay, so you can have any number of um, deferral templates set up. I just have one set up for now. Um, if I go to my chart of accounts, I'm going to show you where you can default that on a GL card. So if I look for my um, prepaid software contracts account, I'm going to view this. So 
Oops, sorry, I'm on the wrong. Um, sorry, this would be my sales software account. And if I view this, you'll see here, deferral template code. You can actually attach a template, a template to an actual account if you're going to be doing these postings all the time. Otherwise, you can add them dramatically or dynamically on the, on the line as you go. Okay, so back to that sales order that I had started. Let's go. Okay, I'm just going to do a new one just to keep things straight. So, I'm going to create a customer and GL account. I'm going to choose my sales software account again, one for 12000 And if I look on the line, sorry, you'll see my deferral schedule. You can look from here. And right now it's going to do 1,000 over a month. You see that it's starting on March the 1st. My posting date is uh, March 24th, but because I picked the beginning of the year, that's why it's, it's distributed like this. Um, if I wanted to change the number of periods to six, I can do that and hit calculate schedule or refresh this, or I can change the straight line to days per period, calculate schedule, and it changes the number. So even though you have a default template, you can modify that on the fly as you go. So for simplicity's sake, I'm going to put back to straight line in 12, oops, 12 periods, recalculate the schedule. And also to show you uh, what we talked about previously um, on this preview posting, if I wanted to see how this is going to hit my GL, I can click this, and it's going to be 26 entries. Okay, and so you can see it's coming in and out of the um, prepaid contract and into my revenue account each month. Okay, so. Now that we're ready to go, I am going to throw a number in here and I'm going to post this invoice. Okay, and now I'm going to look for those reports, those out of the box reports that I talked about earlier. So there's a sales deferral summary report. And you can see it. So I've done a couple of examples previously, but this is the one. Um, that we just did on the 24th. Um, posted invoice gives you the document number. 12 periods. The amount that's already been recognized is $1,000. It was taken this month. There's 11,000 to go, and then this is the total amount. So these are the Autobox um, reports. There's one for sales, there's one for purchasing, and there's one for GL journals. Okay, so go back to my PowerPoint. And this is just a screenshot of how this works in the GL journal. So it's the same idea on the line, for a schedule at the top, and then you can see the postings before you post. Okay, the next topic we're going to move on to is positive pay. So positive pay, um, it helps reduce fraud in collaboration with the bank. So what happens is the company, the checks that the company's issued, um, the file is sent to the bank just to give them a heads up, are these are the checks that we've already issued, and any checks coming in that are not contained on this file um, would indicate a fraud alert. So now 2016 comes with two positive pay formats already done out of the box with um, formats for Bank of America as well as Citibank. So the advantages of this is it's ease of, ease of use, export flexibility. It's, it's uh, one click and the, and the file is exported. There's visibility of check entries sent to the bank. And of course, the overall goal is to reduce fraud. So to show you this in NAV 2016, we'll go through three steps again. I'll show you how positive pay is set up on the bank card. We will create an export file, and then we'll manage the export file. 
Okay, jumping back into NAV, I'm going to go to my bank account. Okay, we're going to use operating bank account. Okay, so on the transfer tab of the bank account, you'll see that there's a new field here called positive pay export code. And this basically defaults into the bank export import setup. So there's a new code that's come with 2016 regarding positive pay. And you can also choose, like I said, whether you're using Bank of America or Citibank. And again, this is all out of the box, no extra coding involved. So for this example, I'm going to show you the Bank of America positive pay. Okay, so we see that it's set up correctly on the bank account. Uh, on the ribbon of the bank, there is a positive pay export button that we'll click. Okay, and so what happens is, this is these are all the checks that we have issued out of the bank account. Um, and you can decide how much of this gets sent to the bank. Maybe a procedure that, you know, of the 15th of every month, this when you send the, the file, so you can limit it that way. So once you're ready with what you have on the screen ready to send, you can just click export. And you can either open or save the file. For the demo purpose, I will open. And essentially, this is what it looks like. It's, it's basically um, giving some documentation as well as the vendor number. So that's uh, saved and then is sent to your bank. And then once you're done, we're back to the bank account here. And again, on the ribbon, if we ever wanted to see um, what our positive pay entries were, we can click here. And this gives you a history. So you can see in this example, I've done three exports. This one had one check associated with it. Um, so if we just navigate to the entries, you can see this is the individual check that went with that. And the one that we just did, you're able to see the details there as well. And if you want to, you can always resend them, re-export positive pay to file. So if the bank didn't get the file, you need to redo it. It's the same procedure. Open and it saves and, and you can manage it that way. Okay. So, back to my PowerPoint. Again, this is a recap of the screenshots. So, positive pay is on the uh, ribbon, and then you can export and view your details from there. Next demonstration is going to be regarding permissions. As many of you know, the NAV permissions are very time consuming. Um, you know, it's, it takes a lot of time to set them up properly, and it's an adding format, so it's not, not so much you can have everything and take it away, you have to add as you go. So the concept of the permissions haven't changed, however, they've been improved in order to save the administrator time during setup. So some of the new features are user groups, permissions recording, include exclude permissions, and show all permissions. Um, the user groups basically allow a bunch of permission sets to be included in a group where individual users can be added. So if someone was going on vacation, you could add them to the group for, say, one week, and then you can remove them from the group, whereas previously you had to uh, tamper with their individual user permissions in order to make that happen. Permissions recording, if you uh, want to just complete a process, um, you can record that process and then NAV comes up with exactly what permissions are needed to complete that. So it pretty much does your permissions for you. And then I will show the other two examples as we go in the, in the demo. The advantages of these are it's, it's a time saver. I mean, it makes it easier to put permissions together, uh, ease of use, and increased visibility for the administrator over permissions. Okay. So I'm going to come out of there. I'm going to start on the permission sets. Okay, I'm just going to uh, delete this one, for example. Okay, so for permission sets, um, let's say 
uh, we are in here and we look to user groups. So just for the demo purposes, I created two groups. So one was post payment journals and one was create customer. So you can have as many groups as you want. Um, this is, I've just created two here. Uh, and within that, you can see what the permission sets are. So if I click into here, involved in this particular group, I've got four different permission sets. So just to put it in perspective, if I wanted to give a user all these permissions, I would have to give them individually four groups. Instead, now that I have a, new, a, user group, or, um, a user group set up, I can just add users to the group. So here's the group members. So right now I have one user here. If I wanted to add another user, I would just click here, add them to the group, hit OK. So now they've got those permissions as well. So for demo purposes, I'm just going to take this one off. Um, because when you see uh, visibility here, permission set by user group, it gives you a um, bit of a matrix view. So for example, let's come out of here. This, um, sorry, user by user group. This is the one I was looking for. So the, I have two users set up in my database, and you can see that this particular first user has access to all of the groups, whereas the second user has access just for that third group. And then you can see the permission sets that they apply to on the side. So again, just back to that increased visibility on you know, who has what and the ability to add users to groups without toying with their individual permissions. So going back to permission sets, um, I'm going to show you that record functionality. So I'm just going to create a new one called new, just for example. And in here, we're going to look to permissions. And you'll see on the Actions tab, there is a Record Permissions functionality. OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the record functionality, and I'm going to create a sales order, add an item, release it, and then I'm going to come back here, and it's going to record all the permissions that it took me to do that. So if I hit Start, and it's just giving you a, a message that you want to clear your cache and you want to start the recording now, I'm going to say yes. I'm going to minimize the screen. And I'm going to go into sales orders. OK. I'll use my 10,000 again. I'm going to set up for an item. And I'll use 1988. Five. And Let's say I needed to release that document. So basically, I'm going to come back in here. And I'm going to hit stop. And then it's going to ask me, do you want to add all those recorded permissions? And I'm going to say yes. So there we go. So now it's just added to this new group new everything that I just did that will allow the user to create a sales order, add an item, and release the document. So this is the basis for, um, for starting. Now, I talked about some other advantages uh, on the PowerPoint slide. You'll see that there is this include, exclude permission set. Um, so let's say I, I, I wanted that recorded permission to be added, but I also wanted, say, another user group to be added into this permission set. So I can click this button, and you can either use include or exclude in terms of the permission set. So let's say I wanted to include, just for simplicity's sake, um, ADC, ADCS setup to this group. So I hit OK. And you'll notice at the bottom, sorry, the bottom, these mini form headers, that's all part of that other group. So you can basically cut and paste groups together, whereas in the previous versions you had to highlight them and then add them and export to Excel and kind of combine them in your own way. This one allows you to um, kind of cut and paste functionality within the system. So the opposite is true too. We can also say we want to exclude that new set, that new uh, group. We can take that out, and then it pulls it all the way out. You can also say, you know, maybe you want to give 
the user inter, uh, insert permission for all of these that are on the screen. You can say here allow insertion and you can say yes if we highlight everything here and we hit yes, then you'll notice that all the yeses come through. Um, maybe on the modify permission, you want to say, whoops, sorry, you have to highlight the line first. Um, you want to say I want to give indirect for everything, you can do it there. So you can play around with the permissions once they're there. Um, and you'll notice here it says show only in permission set. So right now you're only seeing the permissions that are currently available in the permission set. Now if you choose this option, you can see everything. So you hit all, so they do, it doesn't give permissions for each table data, but it lists them all so that you know if you want to go through and just say, you know, yes to this one and then yes to this one, you know, the ones you know, whereas before you always had to look up the number and enter it in. This just kind of gives you a little bit of a ease of use in terms of how it's going to work. And then you can always throw it back into only in the permission set. <coughs> Okay, so like I said, permissions haven't changed in terms of the structure, but there's been a little bit more tools provided so that they can be done a bit quicker. Okay, back to the PowerPoint. So just showing here that the user groups, you can add users, and then the recording functionality as well as the include exclude permission set. Okay, our second last topic is workflow. Workflow is a, a brand new topic in NAV 2016, and it's, uh, it's pretty neat. It's, uh, Microsoft NAV offers 20 standard workflow templates out of the box. Um, more can be customized by yourself. You can use the templates as a starting point and then customize from there. There's three work type um, workflows. Uh, the first one is approval. So, for example, if you want someone to just be able to approve a, maybe a customer credit limit uh, increase or a, a purchase order dollar amount, you can have an approval notification. Um, notification is just basically um, giving someone a heads up that something has happened, not necessarily waiting for an approval. And the third one is a process execution. So you can combine a few steps together. Um, with the help of the job queue to make things um, happen more seamlessly. Uh, the advantages of the workflow are that there's efficiency gains, um, you know, especially because people are being notified right away what's happening or um, if they need approval, or it takes away like the emails on the side or uh, telephone calls. There's also greater visibility to what's happening in the system because the workflow is tracking all the approvals um, and the stages. And also consistency. So if you have a process that always goes through five steps, the workflow can make sure that it hits those five steps. <clears throat> so in order to demonstrate the workflow, again, I'm going to go through three steps. Um, we're going to set up the workflow from the template. We're going to review the job queues. And then we're going to execute the workflow. OK. Right. Okay, so there's a workflow section in NAV, and it's also, um, it can be quite large, this workflow, so I'm just going to give you kind of an overview of how it works, and you can always dig in a little bit deeper um, later. So essentially, the, the 20 workflow templates that I was talking about are in this section. They're under administration, finance, integration, purchase documents, sales and marketing, and sales documents. So this is what Microsoft thought was maybe most of the common requests. It put together the workflow templates and then um, is letting the user kind of decide which way to go. For simplicity's sake, I used this purchase invoice workflow as the demo. So what you'll notice, these are templates. And so when you open the templates, um, this is what's come out of the box. So in this particular scenario, um, a purchase document is released and the type is an invoice. So for example, when you have a purchase invoice that's released, then the response to the right, it would post that document. Now whether you would want this to happen or not, this is just for demo purposes. But in this particular case, when I release a purchase invoice, it's going to automatically post the, the invoice 
And once it's posted, it's going to create a journal line in the background um, in the payment journal. So it's basically going to assume that you're going to want to pay that right away. And then the third step is that it's going to create a notification for the user either by email or by notes. Um, so what you do, this is basically the template. Um, so you, you create a new workflow from the template, which I've already done. So we'll just jump back to the menu. So if I go under workflows, you'll see that this is my workflow that I've created and, and it is enabled. So it looks very similar to what we were just looking at, but the difference is this is my actual workflow whereas the other one was just a template from the, what from this was produced from. And then in, because it's my um, workflow, I, I enter in my data. So for example, I'm telling it that I want it to go into that payment template name and that batch name of bank when it goes into the payment journal. Whereas the template is just blank, so it allows the users to tweak it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, so this is basically a, a basic workflow that's set up. I'm going to show you how the job queues play into this. So Nav also comes with four job queues out of the box. And this one at the end is one that we're going to be using today. So this job queue is going to run the uh, post purchase and sales functionality based on the workflow um, setup. And I've got it started and running, so this will, this will take care of my posting. Okay, so if I go to purchase invoice, let's see. Okay, I'm gonna create a new one. Choose it for a vendor. And I'm just going to do office supplies for now. Okay, $600. Okay, so I've entered in my purchase invoice. I'm going to put my vendor invoice number, and then I'm going to click release. So at this point, this is a trigger to my, my workflow that this should be posted. So if I come out of here, give it a couple seconds, and if I click refresh, you'll notice it's gone. So that's already been posted. And once it's posted, the next step in the workflow was that it was going to create an entry in my payment journal. So I'm going to go to my payment journal. Okay, and you'll notice, I'll just get rid of this blank line, that it automatically created the payment for this invoice at $600. Now it didn't post the payment, but it created everything for me um, based on that workflow. So if I want to finish this off, do a check. Oops, um, I'm going to print my check. I'm just going to do a PDF. Okay, and then I can post through my journal. So again, that was just one type of how the workflow can work. Um, and there's there's a, you know lots and lots of dis different scenarios and uh, combinations that you can go through with that. Now the last piece that didn't come up is the um, the email notification, and I didn't have that set up on this demo. But basically, um, you can get an email saying this bank is this bank payment is ready to be posted once that um, purchase invoice is released and then posted. All right, we're almost through to the end. The last one here is, oh, sorry, this is the last um, screenshot of the workflow, just kind of summarizing what I did. The workflow template I used was the, work, the purchase invoice workflow, and this is what it looked like. And the last demonstration is going to be about report enhancements. So um, Microsoft Nav made some updates to existing reports. One of the biggest things is they, they updated all the reports to letter size when printing. It was previously at A4, and, and that was more of a European style, and, and sometimes that contributed to issues with um, printer drivers, et cetera. So that's been updated. Uh, there also is a new vendor prepayment journal, and what that does is it gives a lot more detail in terms of what 
um, invoices are being paid and if there's any discounts associated with that. And thirdly, they have an improved landscape account schedule. So um, many of you have probably used the uh, landscape version before where it didn't fill out um, the width of the report. You couldn't get all your data in there. Um, so they've figured that out and, and now the account schedule takes the full width of the landscape so you can get more columns in there to see your data. So the advantages there, greater visibility to data, ease of use and error reduction. So I just have a couple screenshots to show. So this is, this is the vendor prepayment journal and the highlight is just the additional detail that you see in there that's previously not in the older version. So it tells you the invoice, the due date, you know, if there's any discounts associated with it and what it's paying. I know that a lot of clients have requested this previously so Microsoft added that to the version. And then this is just an example of the account schedules where you can see the full width being used and additional columns um, being allowed in this particular report. Okay, well that brings us to the conclusion of what's new in 2016. I really appreciate you joining us today and listening and uh, we're going to open it up for any questions. Great, thanks so much Sherry. Uh, lots of improvements. We do have a couple of questions. So uh, for the first one we're going to go back to uh, 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 deferral accounting and uh, Luke wanted to know if you could set up a deferral schedule for for an item or to an item card. No, right now the deferral schedules are only on the sales, purchase, and general journal lines. I'm not yet. Thanks for the question, Luke. And then um, and under workflows, uh, Paul would like to know for approval workflows, is there a staff hierarchy uh, attached so it flows to a person's manager? Yes, you set up the priorities and, and the hierarchy of, of who's getting the first notification as well if, if people are absent, absent or, or not. So that's all included in there. All right, we're gonna, I'm gonna check and see if we have any raised hands. Oh, here we have another one. Um, are we planning on doing a webinar on the service module? We actually talked about that a little bit. Um, we will uh, we will try to do that, Josh. So we don't have one planned right now, but um, if you would like to uh, delve a little deeper into that, you can definitely get in touch with your Archer Point representative or your partner, and uh, we do something one-on-one. -on -one. We don't have anything planned yet, but um, that could change since we know there's an interest. Appreciate the question, Josh. And I'm going to check for, and any updates to the manufacturing within Dynamics, maybe? Um, I didn't see any obvious ones in the documentation that I have looked at, um, but that doesn't mean that there isn't necessarily some in there. Yeah, and I didn't go through all the details either. <clears throat> but I don't recall seeing that um, in the high, high level. Yeah. And then uh, George would like to know, is positive pay also a possible with other banks? Definitely. You can use it with other banks. Um, the, the, um, the report is just out of the box um, with, with NAB 2016 with those two banks, but, but you can tweak it for the other banks as well. Yeah, and Josh, I'll get back to you to see if there's anything out there on the service module. <clears throat> I definitely will email you directly. All right. Let me check one more time for any raised hands. All right. I think that's about it. So uh, I just want to let everybody know if you want to continue the conversation on NAV 2016, please join us tomorrow and your fellow NAV users tomorrow at the same time, 2 Eastern. 11 Pacific on Twitter for our NavTalk Twitter chat. Simply follow hashtag NavTalk, that's N-A-V-T-A-L-K, and uh, for updates, and I hope to see you there. We do appreciate your time today and um, hope you found it valuable. If you'd like to suggest further topics, then um, by all means, please email us at info at archerpoint.com. We welcome your feedback and suggestions there, info at archerpoint.com. Thanks, everybody. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you, Sherry. You're welcome.